Hi guys and welcome to the second lesson of our Land Shaped by Wind and Ice unit. Today we're going to be looking a little bit more about rocks and how they are shaped by the physical factors on our planet. As always your activity is to watch this video and then at the end of the video there will be a chance for you to watch three questions. I would like to answer those questions and upload them onto Satchel 1. Now, as a bit of a recap from our first lesson of this term, we were looking at something called the rock cycle. Now, the rock cycle uh, was a really, really important concept because it told us how certain rocks were formed. We talked about how volcanic eruptions cause the formation of igneous rocks. Those igneous rocks can break down to sediment, and when that sediment forms together, we get a different type of rock entirely called sedimentary rock. And then once that igneous and sedimentary rock is put under immense pressure or immense heat, it forms that metamorphic rock. Now, metamorphic rock is that really, really hard rock. Igneous is quite hard as well. And sedimentary is very, very soft. And so that's a really important uh, factor to bear in mind as we go through this lesson. There are three different types of rocks, mainly igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. And that will have an impact on what we're going to look at now, which is something called weathering. So before we kick off then, guys, I'd like just to pause the video here, read the question and come with an answer, then unpause once you've had a go. OK, so hopefully we'll have realised the answer to that question is false. The Earth's surface has not stayed the same for thousands of years. In fact, the Earth's surface is constantly changing. Now, those changes are very, very minor to the human eye. But if we were to do like a time lapse on the Earth over the last thousand years, we would see some pretty large changes indeed. But the question you've got to have then is, well, if the rocks are constantly changing, why are they changing? And why, for example, do we have a rock that randomly looks like this here? Or why, for example, do we have rocks that stick out like on this photo here? So what I'd like to do now is, and it's a little bit harder, I want you to spend a minute and a half or two minutes uh, thinking about this question. What factors may have caused this rock to look like that? So pause the video for two minutes. What could have caused the rock to look like that? And once you've had a go, if you jot down a few uh, brief notes and then replay the video once you've had a go. Okay, so... It'd be interesting to see what kind of ideas you came up with here. Um, and I don't know, uh, obviously, what you're saying here, but you might have come up with things like um, the rain, the wind. Um, you might have come up with things like humans impacted them as well. And so, it's important to note here, then, that rocks are broken down by something called weathering. Now, weathering is, is by definition, the breakdown of rocks at the Earth's surface. So whenever we are seeing rocks being broken down or destroyed, um, that term we are using is called weathering. Now, over the next couple of years, we're going to look at lots of different types of weathering. So, for example, when you get into year eight, we will be looking at biological and chemical weathering along the coastline. But for today, we're just going to focus on something called physical weathering. So there are lots of different types, but today... We're just going to focus on one specific element of weathering. And so within that physical weathering, we're going to kind of address here three main ways in which the rocks on our planet are physically weathered. So those igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks, how are they worn down? How are they eroded uh, by three factors? And those three factors are temperature changes, the wind and something called freeze-thaw weathering. So we'll start off with our first one, temperature changes. So let's imagine now we're in a desert. Now during the day, uh, the desert is very, very hot, and during the night, the desert is very, very cold. And when it is very, very hot, the rock itself heats up and expands. As it cools down, 
it shrinks and contracts back in. Think of it like blowing a balloon out of a let it go and blowing it up again. And if this rock is heated and cooled many times, if it expands and contracts and expands and contracts, eventually there'll be small cracks that start to form and pieces of rock might fall away. So obviously in real life, I use that balloon analogy there, the rock only changes really, really, really small amounts. But that change of going expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting is enough to start forming cracks on the rock. And so this is the picture we see here. You can see there are areas where the rocks look like they're starting to fall away. So they look like they're almost peeling away from the rock face. And that's because these are the cracks that are starting to appear in this bigger rock here. And over time, as this process continues, we would expect there to be more and more cracks like these forming and therefore more and more rocks uh, being split uh, from large pieces of rock. The second main factor is the wind. Now, we've been studying weather and climate at the start of year seven. So we know quite a bit about wind, but we've never really looked at what it actually does uh, on our planet. And one of the main things that wind does is it erodes or wears down materials. So wind erosion is where soil, rocks or minerals are worn away by the wind. And in particular, we're going to look at the areas and we'll look at rocks uh, in particular. Now, this is the strongest in areas of very little shelter. So if, for example, I'm going to show you a picture of the, uh, the, the Wild West in the USA, the deserts of Arizona and the like, where there is very little vegetation because of the biome choice, where there's very little vegetation, um, the wind can blow a lot stronger and therefore has a quite a dramatic impact on the rocks around it. Whereas if we go to the rainforest or if we go to the UK's biome, the temperate forest, we don't see as much wind erosion because that wind is blocked by our trees, by our plants, by our houses, etc. And so there are two main ways in which wind can erode. The first one is something called deflation. And that's where the wind just picks up bits of particles of rock and carries them away. So there might be some small particles of a sedimentary rock and the wind picks them up and blows away. The same sort of way that you see the wind maybe pick up an old crisp wrapper and fly it off. And that's called deflation. And that's one of the main things that happens with the wind. Uh, and that's why as well, uh, you know, things like sandstorms are an example of extreme deflation. The second type, probably the most important type, is something called abrasion. And that is where the surface is worn down uh, by the particles carried by the wind. So let's imagine that because of deflation, the wind has picked up lots of little bits of rock, little particles of rock. As it blows, it kind of acts like sandpaper. So that little particle of rock being carried by the wind is then rubbing against other bits of rock. And at rubbing actually, like sandpaper, is causing it to slowly be worn down over time. So over time, that rock starts to, to shrink, starts to reduce, starts to erode because of deflation and then by abrasion. And I think this process is a little bit weird because you end up with some of the most fantastic images in the natural world. So this here is a rock face. It looks like a desert environment. And all these amazing lines here are from that wind erosion. The grooves have been created from the abrasion, from the wind picking up small particles and slamming them against the rock like big bits of sandpaper. And you can see it here. You see these sort of images where you've got the rock bends in these weird directions. You can really clearly see the pattern of the wind that is flowing through this rock. And then the kind of the most famous image as well, we think about cowboy films, we think about the Wild West, and what comes into my mind is these sort of images here. We've got the rocks that are standing alone, the wind must be swirling in these areas, uh, and you can see again the grooves on, on, the, on the formations where the wind has been eroding, been weathering those rocks. Now we can kind of guess that these rocks up here would perhaps be metamorphic, they could be quite strong, because these are the only ones that are still standing. In theory, if we flash back a thousand, two thousand, a hundred thousand years, 
these rocks maybe would have connected, but they've been worn down by the erosion. And so we can assume that this is quite hard rock, whereas the rock at the bottom down here might be more sedimentary. And then the final example of weather we're going to look at is something called freeze-thaw weathering. Now, this one is a little bit similar to the first one, but it's all to do with water in rocks. Now, freeze-thaw weathering doesn't really happen in the desert. It tends to happen in colder environments. So rocks in the taiga and the tundra biome, for example, would really uh, be better be impacted by this type of weathering. So here's how it works. We start off with our rock and water enters a crack in that rock. And as the water enters the crack, it gets filled up. However, when that water freezes, that expands. So if you ever put something in your freezer, like an ice cube, when water freezes, it expands outwards, it gets bigger. And that process physically causes a crack to, to occur in the rock. As that crack is deeper, when it rains again, more water goes into that crack. Until eventually, and you kind of guess what's coming here, until finally that process repeats and repeats and repeats until eventually the rock splits in two. So we're starting off with a crack in our rock with the water, freezing and expanding, it's melting, it's, it's freezing again, and eventually it's cracking the rock. So if we just go back to the very start here. It's very obvious that these are three ways they're physically weathered. Is it doing temperature changes from hot and cold? We've seen how the wind can form different uh, landforms, and we've also seen the impact of freeze-thaw weathering. Now, to finish off, there are three review questions here. As always, I would like to answer and upload these uh, onto Satchel One. Please write them in your own words and uh, write them in full sentences if you can. As always, you are free to rewind or rewatch parts of this video to get the information for these review questions. So, for example, you might want to rewind to this uh, point of the video here if you are trying to explain how freeze thaw weather it happens, and vice versa. You might want to go back to these uh, images to talk about wind weathering. As always, if you have any questions about this, there will be a Zoom link provided for you. Or alternatively, you can leave your comments on Satchel 1.